You know that the will of God is that you would suffer for His name's sake? Are, 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 you, are you being persecuted for, for the name of Jesus? If you're not, there's a problem. If even God talks about it in Matthew chapter 5. He says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of, of heaven. And then immediately after, he says, Blessed are you when men persecute and revile you and say all kinds of evil against you for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For like so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. If you're, if you're not receiving persecution for your faith, are you a true believer? Did you know the NASCAR has invocation before every race? I did, you know what? The Bible says that the things that men esteem are an abomination to the Lord. An abomination. And you know, you know that's that's not a term that a lot of people use these days, but it means extreme hatred. People want to exalt NASCAR. They want to exalt men. They want to put their trust in man. But God says, don't put your trust in flesh. You put your trust in the living God. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before Him. God, God is a refuge for us. Not NASCAR. Not these drivers. Not man. Man will let you down. Man, man will fall. Man, man, man has not arrived. God. God has arrived. And you go to the source, you go to the strength. You don't, you don't go to things that are inferior in order to overcome. You, you, you go to the best source, and the best source is Jesus. The best source is the Holy Spirit. The best source is His Word, the Bible. You don't need any other book. You, you know what? The Bible even says that you will need no man to teach you. That, that, you, that you will have understanding from the Lord. You, you don't need people to teach you the Bible. All you got to do is open it up and read it in faith. Instead of trying to put yourself as the judge and try to, instead of trying to pick apart the word of God to make it fit into somebody else's doctrine that they told you about. You read, read the word for yourself. You know, the, the word of God is, is, how, is how you get born again. And that's talked about in, in First um, Peter chapter 1. It says that it, um, it says um, that, that, that you are born again, not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever, because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away, but the word of God. God endures forever. The Word of God endures forever. You got to come to the Word in order to endure forever. You got to become one with Jesus. Jesus is the Word. Read it in John chapter 1. Jesus is the Word. You, you got to know Jesus, not externally, not through your tithes, not through your repetitious vain prayers. I'm talking about calling out to God in the secret place. I'm talking about humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God and God lifting you up, drawing near to God and God drawing close to you. That's in the book of James. These, these, are, these are promises from God. Jesus himself, he says, ask, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who, who knocks, it will be opened to you. Or what man is there among you? If, if his son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? Or, or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If, the, if, the, if you being evil know how to give good things to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good th gifts to those who ask him? God who is in heaven wants to give you good things things but you got to ask you got to seek his face diligently not through your priest not through anyone else you got to seek the face of jesus christ the beautiful face of god god almighty coming down from his throne becoming man enduring the cross for our sins such great love has has jesus that that it, that he was compelled to come down to, to give us proper instruction to endure the cross to endure ridicule
and, and to suffer and he, he bore our sins on the cross so that we could be so that we could be free so that we don't have to taste death and then and then on the third day he rose again and he sits at the right hand of God making intercession for his saints not for the people Jesus does not pray for the world did you hear what I said you know that there is an accuser of the brother which is Satan and he and he's and he's accusing the saints to God the Father. But then there, there's Jesus there, the only begotten Son of God, making intercession for his saints. Saying, saying Lord, God, look at the change. Look at the fruit of this person's faith. Look at how this person has, has turned from their wicked ways and is seeking your face. Oh, Lord, don't remember their sins. And God says, oh, I will cast their sin as far as the east is from the west. I will remember them no more because your sin, the sin of those, those people, the saints of God, is no longer before the face of God. Behold, is, is the hand of God sure that, that it cannot save? Or is his ear heavy that he cannot hear? But your sins have separated you from your God. Your sins, your iniquities, your iniquities have separated you from your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Sin. What are you going to do about your sin? Everybody has sin. All have sin and all have fallen short. All have sin and all have fallen short of the glory of God. Everybody has sin that they got to give an answer to. But the but the redeemed of God, the remnant, they repent from their sins. They 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 repent, they confess and they forsake their wicked ways and by the power of God and by you making no provision in the flesh, they go and sin no more and they have the grace that Jesus offers upon their life. They have grace from Jesus when, when they're no longer living in sin. Sin of getting drunk, sin of lying, sin of covetousness, greed, all these sins, adultery, hatred, unforgiveness, all these sins, lewdness, uncleanness, fornication, having sex out of marriage, all these sins can be atoned for through Jesus Christ, through his grace. This is available for everybody. It's not just for certain people. This is for you, and it's for me. God has done it in my life. God has done it in my life. You know, Jeremiah testified, and he says, Your words were found, and I ate them. He consumed the words of God. It says, Jeremiah said, Your words were found, and I ate them. Your words were the joy and the rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by your name. Oh Lord God of hosts, does, does your heart rejoice at the, at the hearing of the gospel being preached, at the, at the hearing of the words of Jesus? I hope it does. I hope, I hope you belong to Jesus, because if you don't have the Lord, you'll be cast into hell, everlasting destruction. And it's, it's, not just go <clears throat> it's not just going and dying and then just laying on the ground forever. That's not what happens. Oh, don't fall into that lie. It's not reincarnation. You're not going to come back as a spider. You're not going to come back as your dog. You're not going to come back again. It's appointed for man to die once and then face the judgment. You're going to die once and then you're going to sit before the white throne of God and God's going to open up the, the books and he's going to say, is your name found in the book of life? Let's look at it. Let's read. Let's see. Let's see. Andrew, 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 Andrew. No, no Andrew Smith found in the book of life. Oh, Lord, please don't have our names blotted out of the book of life. We need your redemption. We need your saving power. We can't endure a hell for eternity where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. We cannot endure it. You cannot have time again. This is the day of salvation today. You won't get another chance. There's no such thing as purgatory. All lies that come from the Catholic Church. Oh, people can pray you in. Oh, Mary can intercede for you. What a wicked, wicked lie. 
Oh, it makes my stomach turn, makes me want to throw up when I hear the lies. The lies that are brought upon people, and they just believe it because they have lack of knowledge. They don't read the Bible for themselves. Lies. Laziness. I was, I was lazy. I didn't read the Word of God before. But now I opened up the Bible and I have read it. And from abiding in the Word of God, reading the Word of God, receiving faith through Jesus and repenting of my sins, I have power from on high to overcome my sin. I'm no longer a slave of sin. I hope you're not a slave of sin, a slave to your beer, a slave to your pornography, your sexual morality, a slave to your lies, all your web of lies. You have to make up another lie to cover up your first lie, and then you got to make another lie to cover up your second and your first lie, a lie upon lie upon lie. Oh, God says that all those who love and practice a lie will not inherit the kingdom of God. They will not. They'll be cast out. They'll be cast out. But to him who overcomes, oh, to him who overcomes, the words of Jesus, he says, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, just as I also have overcome, came, and sat down on my Father's throne. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Open your ears. Don't stop your ears from hearing. Don't make your heart like flint. Don't harden your heart against the gospel, against the word of God. Allow it to prick your conscience. Allow it to, to, to penetrate your heart. Allow it to bring up the sins that are, are before you and ever present before God. And repent. Oh, come and have clean hands and a pure heart before Jesus. You can be cleansed. You can be cleansed from your sin. First John says, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sin, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Are you abiding in God? Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. If you're a sinner, you haven't seen God. You have turned your eyes and you have closed your eyes and stopped your ears so that you cannot see God, so that you cannot receive his instruction. And you are in darkness. Darkness. When you close your eyes and your ears from the Holy Spirit crying out to you, exposing your sin, exposing your gravity. Don't be in darkness. God can give you light. God can give you light. Jesus said that a little while longer the light is with you. Walk in the light while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who is in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. You're in darkness when you're when you're partaking and you're you're practicing getting drunk and drinking. Oh, I'm just having a good time. It's sin. It's sin. Oh, oh, it, it, it's fun to sleep around and, and just just uh, have fun and do whatever I want to do. It's sin. It's a work of the flesh. Oh, it's fun to get high. It's, I'm not hurting anybody by 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 smoking weed and, and doing meth in the privacy of my own home. I mean, it's not like I'm getting on the road. It's not like anyone else is affected. It's sin. It's sin. And the wrath of God is upon you. Oh, God says, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end will be because they are a perverse generation. Children in whom is no faith. It's perverted when you commit sin. It's perverted. It's wrong. It's wrong. And it will lead you to hell. It separates you from God. Sin separates you from God. Isaiah chapter 59. Read it. It's so important. You will be accountable for, for what you've done to Jesus. You will be accountable for what you have to do with Jesus, with your faith. you got to come to Jesus with faith. God 
says that without faith it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You're going to get benefits when you seek the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not, I'm not preaching prosperity gospel here. I'm not saying all your problems will go away, everything's going to be honky-dory. That's not what I'm preaching here. But God is saying that, that you will get a reward when you diligently seek his face. You know what the reward is? Salvation. You know what the reward is? Overcoming your sin, coming out of, of being a slave, being in bondage to sin, and being free. Being free. Being free from the, from the label. Being free from your bondage. Being free from, from the lies and the destruction that's caused from your sin and my sin. That's the benefit of coming to God in faith. That's, that's, that's the reward. I mean, I, I, I can't even sit, stand up here long enough to tell you all the different types of rewards that can come to you when you come to Jesus in faith. I haven't experienced them all, but God has a special reward for you when you come to God in faith. When, 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 you, when you humble yourselves before God and you seek His face. When you walk in the light as He is in the light, the Word of God says that you have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus will cover you. Will cover you. You're not under the blood of Jesus. You're not under the grace of God when, when you're abiding in sin, when you're living in sin, when you're being a sinner. I'll come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you, and I will be a father to you. God said he's going to be a father to you. God's going to be Abba to you when you come out from among them. You come out from the sinners. You come out from being a sinner. God's going to be your father. He's going to be Abba, dearest daddy to you. Intimate relationship between you and God the Father. When you come out from your sins. And then God, God reciprocates that and he says, And you will be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Read this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, it's in the Bible. God talks about this over and over again about coming out from, from your sin. Come out. Forsake your sin. Oh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. you got to turn from your sin. Turn from your iniquity. Turn from your 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 wicked ways. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, if statement, if and then, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes are open and my ear attentive to prayer made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. That my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. God is with you. God is with you when you enter into covenant with, with the Lord. He's with you. He's dwelling inside of your body. But, but when you destroy the body, you destroy it with defilement, you, de you destroy it with cigarette smoking, with, with your weed, with, with your, your lewdness, your filthy language. Oh, you think holiness can dwell in your body? You think, you think God can, can dwell in iniquity? You know, the Bible says that God is love. The Bible also says that love does not rejoice in iniquity. There, there's no celebration of, of, of you being in sin with God. But you know what God says? That his, his love for us? Even, even when His people, you know, his, his people can go astray. You know, they, they can fall into sin. They can go back as the dog goes back to their vomit. They can, they can go back. To the, to, the, to, the, to the ways of the flesh, the, to the broad road. And, and God, he says, he says, what man of, of there is there among you who, if he has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and goes after the one who has, who has, who has gone astray. And when he has found it, he rejoices. He rejoices. 
There's, there's got to there's be a meaning of you coming back to God. There's got to be a repentance on your end. There, there's, there's a seeking of God looking for you, looking for you. Come back. I am seeking to find what, that which is lost. Come back to God. Oh, but when, but when Jesus finds that lost sheep, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And then, and then he, when he goes back home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. And then Jesus says, Likewise, I say to you that there is more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner. There is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. You got to come back to the sheepfold. You got to come back to Jesus, the shepherd and the overseer of your of your souls. For we are all like sheep having gone astray. You got to come back to the Lord. Return to me. God says, return to me, for I have redeemed you. He will give you mercy. He will give you grace when you come back to the Lord. But you can't come back to the God when, when your hands are, are, are defiled, full and your fingers are full of iniquities. Oh, you can't come back to the Lord when you have pride in your heart. For God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You gotta come back to God. You gotta come back to Him in a, in, with a broken and a contrite spirit, and God will hear your prayers. He will hear your prayers when, when you when you are broken. That's the beauty of God. You can you can you can choose today whom you're going to serve, and, and if you come back to God, broken and and making a steadfastness in your spirit of not going back to sin, of, of making a turn, a repentance in your life, and, and moving in the, in, the, in the way of righteousness and holiness, practicing righteousness and holiness. There will be forgiveness for your sins. You know, in, in 1 John, the, the Word of God says that he who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. But he who sins is of the devil. A sinner is of the devil. If, 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 if you're getting drunk, you're going to go out tonight clubbing, that's sin. You're being a sinner. You're premeditating going out and being a drunkard and partaking in sin. That's sin. You're separated from your God. And God's pleading with you. Don't do it. Don't do it. Come back. Come back to, to holiness. Come back to my salvation. God's hand is not short that it cannot save. Nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your sins have separated you from your God. Your sins. It's, it's not the fault of your spouse because they're nagging. It's, it's not the fault of your parents because they, they weren't there for you. They didn't give you a good upbringing. It's not the fault of, of your aunt or uncle that molested you as a child. It's yours. It's yours and it's mine. The Word of God says that, that all, sin, all, all souls... All souls are mine. We are each individually accountable for our own actions. So what are you doing about Jesus? What are you doing about Jesus? Jesus said, all things have been delivered to me by my Father. And no one... And no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. And then Jesus continues and he says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God wants to give you rest for your souls. He says, come to me. Will you come? Will you come to the cross of Jesus? Will you lay down your sin? Your, your, your big duffel bag, your big backpack full of sin? Will you lay it at the cross of Jesus Christ and be free? Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. you got to learn from Jesus. you got to learn from the scriptures. you got to learn from God Almighty. You need knowledge. 
You need understanding. You need the fear of the Lord to overcome, to be successful. Come to Jesus. And he says, he says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. You're going to find rest for your souls. When, when you come to Jesus, you are going to find rest for your souls. There, there's no rest in sin. There's no rest. There, there, there's, no, there's no rest for the ungodly. There's no peace for the wicked, saith the Lord. Always keeping up. Spending your paychecks to, to try to outdo your friends. Living in covetousness. Wondering what they're gossiping about and saying behind your back. There's, there's no rest in that. There, there's no rest in, in living a life that's focused on getting drunk and, and going to the bars, being the peacock at the party. There, there's no rest in that. Your body's being destroyed. Your soul's being destroyed. You're, you're hidden from the face of God. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of labor. It's, it's tiring being a sinner. Always frustrated, having all this, all this unforgiveness and hate in your heart, and and just just trying to keep up with everything. There's no rest in it. But but when you come to Jesus, you come to Him like He He's calling you today. He says, "Come to Me, come to Me, and you will find rest for your souls. You'll find rest. There there's there's no rest for the wicked. There there's no rest." And, it, and staying up all night because you're out at the bar until 2 o'clock in the morning. There is no rest in that. Coming back home and then having getting into a fight with, with your family or your spouse. There, there's no rest in sin. God wants to give you rest for your soul. He wants to give you freedom from your sins. Will you come to Jesus? Will you forsake your wicked ways and come to God? Will you come to Him today? Repent and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. There, there, is, a, there is a refreshment that comes from God when you repent of your, of your wicked ways. You know, even, even John the Baptist preached about it. You know, he, he said that all flesh shall see the salvation of God when you, when you take the baptism of repentance. But if you're not going to be baptized, if you're not going to accept the baptism of repentance, and you're going to take a pharisaical point of view, you're, you're not going to you're not going to receive that that refreshment from God. You're not going to be free from your sins. You're still going to be in bondage. You're going. You're not going to be free. God wants to give you relief. That's that's part of, of the reason why Jesus went to the cross to to relieve you to free you from your sins and from my sins. Pride is a, is a very dangerous thing. Pride, pride separates you from God. Oh, that's what made the devil fall, was his pride and his arrogance, thinking that he can rise above the Most High God. Oh... When, when pride comes, a fall is going to come right after. Oh, a proud person is, has an unteachable spirit. A, a proud person will not repent because a proud person is never wrong. Oh, you got to confess your sins before God because you have wronged God. You have transgressed against God, and so have I. But I, I've humbled myself before the Lord, and that's what you need to do too. You need to humble your, yourselves before the Lord. How? You, you need to for you need to forsake your sins. You need to understand the gravity of your sin. Right, right now, you're 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 partaking in sin. I mean, you you got yes, you are. Because the Bible, the the. I'm not a drunk. I'm not drunk at all. Sure, sure, sure you are because that's that's something that you indulge in. It's it's a work of the flesh. So you're yes. judging me, and it's okay for no. you to judge? No. I'm, I'm, I'm giving, I'm giving you, me, sir, right? no. Where's your, where's your
the scripture for that? No, the only person that is allowed to judge me is the Lord Himself. Not where's, you. Where's your scripture? Not you. Where's your scripture? Where's your scripture that says man can judge man? That's how the, the Bible says that the spiritual man judges all things. Matthew chapter 7 says, says that... He says, judge not, lest you be judged for the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. But why do you look at the, at the speck in your brother's eye, but not consider the plank that's in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your eye, then you will see clearly to remove the speck that's in your brother's eye. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus is saying for us to judge. He's saying for us to use a righteous judgment. But but you can't judge if it's a hypocritical judgment. I, I'm not giving you a hypocritical judgment because I have been freed from drinking alcohol. I don't drink any alcohol. I've been freed from that. I don't smoke anymore. I don't trust him modestly. I put my faith and my trust in Jesus Christ and that's why I can come out and I can profess that to you. Also, in, in Zechariah chapter 8, verse 16, the Word of God says, These things you shall do. Speak truth, speak truth each to your neighbor. Give judgment in your gates for truth, justice, and peace. That's what the Word of God says. God says that we're supposed to judge. The Word of God also says that we are to examine ourselves as to whether we are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? You know, what? The things that I'm telling you, I hope it's pricking your heart, but I'm not the one that's pricking your heart. That's the Holy Spirit's pricking your heart. I'm not doing anything. I'm just repeating what's in the Bible. And, and if you opened up the Bible, you would see these scriptures inside the Bible. This, this is God judging you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to be judged by God. I want to see how my hands can be cleaner before God. Oh, search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I want God to search my heart. I, I want to be found worthy. I don't want to fall short. I don't want to fall short. I don't want to live my, my life, you know, with one foot in the world, one foot in the in, in, in the Lord being a hypocrite and falling short and being cast into the lake of fire and I hope that's not you you know in, in, in Revelation chapter 3 Jesus says these things says the amen the faithful and the true witness the beginning of the creation of God I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot this is Jesus saying this after he rose from the dead this is Jesus coming back in a revelation to John, and Jesus himself is saying, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot, so then, because you are lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. That's terrifying! That's terrifying to hear God God talking about someone that's kind of just wishy-washy. Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian, but I don't live according to it. I, I still do what I want to do, and I'll just mosey on into heaven. God says he's going to vomit that person out. That's terrifying. He says, I could wish you were hot or cold, so then because you are lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say you are, you have become rich and wealthy and have need, no need of anything and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Jesus says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may become rich and white garments that you may become clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous, be zealous for the Lord. Be zealous for God. Be zealous for the things of the Lord, not for things of the world that are perishing. In 1 John, the Word of God says, Do not love the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 
for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. you got to do the will of God in order to abide forever. You can't put your confidence in, in man. You can't put your confidence in princes. You can't put your confidence in, in the president or in your mayor or anything like that. you got to put your trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. And He will direct your path. He will make your path straight. He will take that, that path that maybe, maybe you're in a valley right now. And He will bring you to a high place. He will, sh he will reveal his, his love and His grace and His mercy when you repent. Maybe you're on this, on this mountain. And, and, and your feet are stumbling on this mountain of sin, of pride. When you, when you stop and you realize the error of your way and you repent, He's going to bring you to an even place. He's going to make your path steady and sure and steadfast. If you're on a crooked path, doing your own thing, being that, that, person, that person with uh, one foot in the world, one foot in the church, their, their crookedness going back and forth, that inconsistency, that wishy-washy person, maybe liar. Uh, when you repent of your ways, he's going to make that path straight. And that rough way where, you know, sometimes you feel the Lord, and then when you're not feeling the Lord, you just kind of go back to your own ways. And then things go wrong in your life, and then you seek the Lord, and then everything's okay, and then you depart from Him. And then things aren't good in your life, and you seek the Lord. You go through this, this, this cycle. God, God is going to make your path straight when you repent, and you, and you see that you've got to be in the Word all the time. You've got to seek His face all the time, and you will receive salvation salvation when 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 you repent of your of your wicked ways and you put your faith in Jesus Christ alone there is no other God there is no other name under heaven by which men must be saved Jesus Christ that precious and beautiful name Jesus Christ oh I can't say it enough praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul will I live I will praise the Lord I will sing praises to my God will I have my being do not put your trust in princes nor in a son of man in whom there is no help his spirit departs he returns to his earth and that very day his plans perish but happy is he who has the god of jacob for his help whose hope is in the lord his god who made heaven and earth the sea and all that is in them who executes justice forever who executes justice god executes justice to the oppressed he, he gives food to the hungry the Lord gives freedom to the to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the ways of the strangers. And he also relieves the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked, the way of the sinner, he turns upside down. He, he makes his paths upside down. You think you got it all figured out? No. Nope. God's going to throw a wrench into your plans and it's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. He's going to turn your ways upside down. That's in Psalms 46, 146. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord.